Some people love taking risks and challenging the odds, but luck isn't at their side every time. A prisoner is kept under Bendwater Federal Prison, but he has no plan to stay there for long. He keeps observing his surroundings to find the tiniest help possible. To get to the isolation cell, he intentionally starts a fight with another prisoner. The warden takes him to an isolation room which is locked with a digital code. He will be kept there for the next few days. The prisoner finds this as the best place to escape. He uses all the available tools he collected like the empty milk carton. He sends a letter home and waits for his acquaintance to arrive. A beautiful woman steps out of the car in front of the prison. Suddenly the car bursts into flames and an emergency is declared in the prison. All the prisoners are sent back to their cells. The warden checks the cameras and feels relieved. Later, when he goes to check on the isolated prisoner, no one is in the cell. The prisoner is already in the woman's car along with another man. They stop by the telephone booth and leave the prisoner. The police are right behind him, but the prisoner is surprisingly not worried at all. He calmly gets in the police car and is taken for a special meeting. This prisoner isn't a criminal at all. He's Ray Breslin, a former prosecutor and a structural engineer. He's commonly known as the escape artist as he can escape any prison. Ray uses this skill to earn money by checking the security standards of various prisons. The prison officer gets really shocked by Ray's introduction and wants to hear the whole story. Ray believes that the weakest point in Bendwater Prison is the fire station beside it. After judging the structure, he intentionally got into a fight and reached the isolation room. Then he started studying the habits of the guards on duty. They both went to smoke quite often, and that's when Ray could escape the room. He used the plastic he pulled from the milk carton and pasted it on the locker keypad. Once he got the password, he escaped the room to change the video of security cameras. The letter he sent home was a secret code to call his mates, Abigail and Hush. They set the fire on the car so the fire brigade is alerted. Meanwhile, Ray escaped the room and reached the fire station to disguise as a firefighter. Then he sneaked into Abigail's car. Ray has successfully escaped 14 prisons by now, and he loves his job. His business partner Lester Clark arranges jobs for him, and he already got the next on pending. Ray reaches his office to meet his client Jessica Miller. She mentions a secret agency that keeps dangerous criminals in custody. Their cells are filled with notorious criminals, and once someone gets in their cell, his existence disappears from this world. Jessica needs more sponsors before launching their service officially. Before that, she wants Ray to check the security standards, but there are some unfavorable conditions. He will not be told about the exact location of the prison. Abigail finds it suspicious, but Jessica is offering advance double payment so Ray agrees to the terms. He will be picked from the street near his residence in the next 24 hours. Abigail reveals his fake criminal identity. He's going to enter prison being the bomb creator named Anthony Portos, who was behind several terrorist attacks. His warden will be Marsh, and his evacuation code will be 310275. If Ray feels any danger, he can tell the evacuation code to the warden and end the mission. Hush also injects him with a tracking device for extra security. Once Ray gets out of the apartment, a black vehicle pulls him inside and removes the tracking device immediately. Afterwards, they inject him with several shots and Ray goes into an uncomfortable deep sleep. He opens his eyes in a glass cell surrounded by several other cells. After a bunch of medical tests, he meets the warden. Ray has given up already and immediately tells his evacuation code. Surprisingly, the warden's name isn't Marsh. He's Hobbs and he doesn't seem to know anything about evacuation codes. Ray is completely stuck. His luck finally deceived him. It feels impossible to escape this place. Numerous fully masked guards are continuously on duty. The prisoners' uniforms are imprinted with QR code and high-tech cameras keep their eyes on them. Ray gets into a fight on his first day, but a guy named Emil Rotmeyer saves him. He wants to befriend him, but Ray isn't interested. Emil finds it suspicious that Ray is always observing the surroundings, so he asks his origin. Ray doesn't answer and asks Emil about his reason for being here. Emil used to work for a guy named Mannheim who stole from the rich and gave it to the poor. Ray agrees to reveal his own identity if Emil helps him getting in the isolation room. They do a fake fight and get thrown in prison. High-intensity lights are shined on them and make them fall unconscious. A doctor comes to check on Ray, but he doesn't reveal any information either. Later, Ray requests Emil to get him a round metal piece, and in exchange he'll add him to his escape mission. Emil requests to meet the warden. Hobbs gives him 10 seconds and Emil asks for a pen and paper to draw a map that may lead to Mannheim. He actually just drew a random figure and made Hobbs angry. The cruel warden orders to fill Emil's stomach with water until he starts to vomit. In between that, Emil secretly takes a cover of a vent under the table. He gives it to Ray, and in exchange he gets to know Ray's real identity. Ray believes that someone tricked him to keep him shut in this place, but he'll figure out soon who this hidden enemy is. Emil agrees to help him if he escapes along with him. 
The deal is settled and they start judging the building structure. Seeing the vertical designs, Ray believes that there's some structure in the basement as well. Moreover, he noticed rivets on the floor of the isolation room, so there must be a passage below there. According to the moist air, aluminum rivets should have been used. But luckily, they are made of steel, which easily rust and expand on heating. Ray can put toothpaste on the metal piece Emil brought and then heat it with the isolation room's lamp. Afterward, it can be used to heat the rivets. But first, they need to get in there. It's not difficult for Emil. He gets up and mocks a Muslim prisoner named Javed. They start fighting and all three are put in the isolation room. Ray uses the metal piece to heat the rivets and pulls them out. He signals at Emil who starts pretending to have a heart attack. When the warden's attention is shifted, Ray knocks off the camera. Hobbs goes to check on Emil and Emil acts like he's possessed. While everyone is busy there, Ray gets under the passage and reaches a basement with several pipes. He finds a ladder and climbs out of the basement just to find out that they aren't on a building at all. The prison is actually a huge ship. Ray runs back, but he damages the water pipes on his way. The water starts getting in the isolation rooms, and between this mess, Ray comes back without getting suspected. Meanwhile, Abigail and Hush are still trying to locate Ray. The payment Jessica promised is also not transferred yet. They question Clark, but he only says that everything is under control. He further claims that he has talked to Jessica and Ray is doing fine. After Abigail and Hush leave, Clark immediately calls Hobbs. He's also one of the investors of this prison and wants to keep Ray there as long as possible to prove the high security and attract more investors. He also asks the warden to make Emil speak up about Mannheim's location. Police of several countries have gathered to locate that single person. He is worth millions now. Hobbs mentions Ray getting close to Emil, so Clark advises to get hard on Ray and make him give up. From the next day, Hobbs orders to beat and punish Ray every day. He's brutally treated, and every inch of his body screams in pain. He's about to give up, but Emil keeps encouraging him. Ray remembers his goals of helping to make the prisons as secure as possible. He brings himself back to senses and starts a plan B. Meanwhile, Hush has tracked down the profiles related to Jessica and found out that the prison is known by the code name The Tomb. It's not a government organization, but an illegal facility run by ex-military officers and gangsters. People pay them to keep their target under custody. Unfortunately, there's no information about the actual location of the tomb. Back at the prison, Ray is active again. They need to find the location of this ship as soon as possible. Ray intentionally hurts himself, gets sent to the doctor for stitches. He pretends to feel the pain and drops over the table to steal some supplies. Then he gets glasses from another prison and uses all the supplies to make a sextant. It can be used to judge the location with the help of stars. Hobbs notices Ray's suspicious activity with Emil and orders to bring him to another section. Hobbs tells him that he knows Ray's identity and used his research to build this facility. Ray asks him to let him go, or he'll burn out of this place. Hobbs isn't threatened at all, so Ray offers him a deal. Emil is not going to open his mouth even if he gets killed, but Ray is close to him and gets out the information. In exchange, Hobbs will let him go. Hobbs likes the deal and agrees, but Ray definitely will not trust him. He tells everything to Emil and pretends to spy on him. Every day he gives unnecessary fake information to Hobbs while planning his escape secretly. They will need Javed's help and bring him in the plan. Emil gives the sextant to Javed, and he goes to meet Hobbs. Javed lies to him that he knows that Ray is going to escape. In exchange for leaking the information, Javed asks to let him pray his evening prayer under the open sky. Hobbs agrees, and Javed uses this as a chance to use sextant. From the readings and his previous knowledge, Ray guesses that they are in the sea near the Morocco coast. Emil can call a team to get them with a helicopter, but they must find a way to send a message to them. Ray knows how to do that. He meets the doctor again and tells him about a book he wrote that's kept in Hobbs' office. Ray tells the details of a specific page and tells the doctor to check on it. After doing that, the doctor realizes that Ray is telling the truth about his identity. He agrees to help him and sends an email to Emil's team. On the day of escape, Ray knocks on his cell wall in a special order. Hobbs recognizes it as a Morse code and interprets it as a message to someone in Section C. He assumes that the escape will start from someone in Section C, so he sends most of his guards there. Once the area is cleared, Ray starts a huge fight and creates chaos. He snatches guns from the guards and runs away with Emil and Javed. Ray turns on the security cameras by breaking the wires and keeps moving. However, Hobbs uses a motion sensor to track them and shuts down all the exits. The guards shot at Ray and his team and the bullet hit Javed. Ray turns off the motion sensor and plans a new strategy. He will get in the security room to unlock the exits and Javed and Emil must get out in the five seconds before the backup generator starts running. Javed believes he can't escape with his injury. 
He asks Emil to leave without him while he keeps away the guards. With guns in both of his hands, Javed faces the guards and gets killed by the final shoot from Hobbs. Meanwhile, Ray breaks into the security room and turns off all the power. Ray gets out and his helicopter has reached there too, but he keeps waiting for Ray. He is trying to get to the top, but Hobbs' bodyguard attacks him. Ray knocks him down the stairs and hides inside the water tank. Hobbs reaches there, but before he can find Ray, the clever guy flushes into the sea. Emil catches him from there, but Hobbs keeps shooting them. Ray takes a gun and shoots the fuel tanks nearby. As he said, he left the ship on fire and escaped. At the seashore, Jessica comes to pick up Emil that leaves Ray in shock. Actually, Emil is Mannheim himself, and Jessica is his daughter. She hired Ray to get in the prison so he could help Mannheim escape. Only Ray could have done this impossible task. After the farewell, Ray returns home to meet Abigail and Hush who tell him about the betrayal of Clark. However, they have taken their revenge already and locked Clark in a cargo ship. Ray still has a lot of job offers, but for now, he just wants to have some peaceful time. Man is capable of more than he imagines. Once you get determined, nothing in the universe can stop you.